He saw the ugliest side of humanity, and at 99, he wants the world to remember. Ben Ferenz is the last living prosecutor from the Nuremberg trials. He was plucked from the army to gather evidence of Nazi brutality and apprehend war criminals. And he was also tasked to prosecute them for war crimes, despite not ever having been in a courtroom. It's really an incredible story tonight. He tells Fox 13's Jennifer Holton about his search for the evidence to build his case. More than half a century has passed since Ben Ferenz rushed into the first of many concentration camps as Nazi Germany fell. Yet the sights and sounds are seared into his memory. There was the chaos of war. The SS were fleeing, running out of the camp. The Americans were shooting after them and chasing after them. Those inmates who were still able to get up were chasing after the, uh, the guards who were there. He was 26. And his job was to find evidence that would bring Hitler's henchmen to justice. I'd surround the office and go into the office. There I would find the death registries who had been in the camp, uh, all the information, who, what transports arrived, how many people, the names of people who had been killed uh, in different transports. And it was a, a gold mine of information from a war crimes point of view. Ferenc stockpiled evidence from 10 camps, Auschwitz included. Though most inmates were too sick to move, he recalls one group that tackled an SS officer to the ground. And they were all kicking him and beating him. And then some guy came along with a gurney, which was what they used to dump them in the crematory. The crematory were going, the smell of air, and it was total chaos, you know, dirt and disease and everybody running inside. And they'd take him and put him in the crematorium, and they cooked him. And they put him in slowly and let him go through well and took it out again. They took him in again, took him out, they kept him alive. Then when he came out, they beat him up again, they killed him. Just a few yards away, he thought about stopping them. And I thought, well, I'm not gonna be able to stop this anyway. And uh, I must confess, I said, let him do it. After the main trials of 1946, the U.S. wanted 12 more trials to prosecute Nazi leadership. While in Berlin, Ferenc came across a treasure trove of documents. And it was Ereignismeldung aus der UdSSR, which means in German, reports from the Eastern Front. And the date, Geheime Reichsache, means top secret. Uh -huh. And these were reports from the Eastern Front of special units called Einsatzgruppen. Their mission uh, was to kill, without pity or remorse, every single Jewish man, woman, and child they could lay their hands on. The documents detailed just how many. I took a little adding machine, a hand adding machine, I added up. I came to a million. I said, that's enough. He took the document to his boss, General Telford Taylor, who told him the Pentagon didn't have the staff for another trial. I began to scream. I said, you can't let these bastards go. This is cal calculated mass murder on a scale unheard of. Thousands of children shot and killed. You can't let them go. He said, well, can you do it in addition to your other work? And I said, of course. There was just one small problem. I had never been in a courtroom. <laughs> I had never tried a case. But I knew criminal law. So he said, OK, you do it, OK? Justice for those murdered by the Einsatzgruppen was on its way, and Ben Ferenz was going to hand deliver it. General Telford Taylor made Ferenz the chief prosecutor of the Einsatzgruppen trial, and Ferenz says that he rested his case in just two days. So there's more to come. Tomorrow we're going to take you inside that courtroom where Ferenz sealed their fate. These deeds of men in uniform were the methodical execution of long-range plans to destroy ethnic, national, political, and religious groups which stood condemned in the Nazi mind. I was not nervous. Uh, I was not nervous either when I confronted the uh, defendants in the courtroom, but I was concerned. Coming up, he's going to explain why he was so concerned in the third and final piece of our series. That's tomorrow at 6 o'clock. Sit tight. We'll be right back.